Welcome to Hope is Here. Do you ever feel exhausted like you're running on fumes? If this so, if so, this week you may get an answer to why you're so tired, and it may actually surprise you how simple the solution might actually be. My guest today and over the next few programs is Dr. Matthew Sleeth, who in addition to being a medical doctor is an author and founder of the nonprofit organization Blessed Earth. The reason I've asked Dr. Sleeth to join us this week is he wrote a book called 24-6, a Prescription for a Healthier, Happier Life. I've enjoyed reading it, and I think you're going to be blessed, too. Dr. Sleeve, thank you for being here with us this week. It's great to be here with you and your listeners. Before we discuss uh, 24-6, your outstanding book, can you share a little bit about your spiritual journey and how you became a follower of Jesus? Absolutely. I'd be honored to. Uh, I grew up in Maryland in dairy farming country. It isn't dairy farming country there anymore, but at the time I lived there, we, I lived in the largest dairy producing county in the United States. And uh, cows have to be uh, milked seven days a week, uh, but on Sundays uh, we would go to a little church uh, and we'd get ready for it Saturday night. My mother would say that we were going to have a bath whether we needed it or not, you know, that sort of thing. And <laughs> I remember. Po- polished shoes and iron handkerchiefs, and we'd, we'd uh, go to that little church. And by the time I was uh, getting up to the teen years, uh, my family sort of imploded, and I stopped going to church. Uh, big mistake, but I, I stopped going. By the time I was 16, I was living on my own. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're 16 and you're on your own, you have absolutely no safety net under you. Well, survival is the big thing. And I just worked. I worked uh, a lot. Uh, And God really wasn't part of the picture. I didn't think about him or anything. And I went along in in life like that. And uh, I was a carpenter. Uh, built houses and uh, remodeled houses, <clears throat> that sort of thing. And uh, uh, then one day I, I went to a house in the D.C. suburbs, and uh, the father of the house was a periodontal surgeon, my favorite kind of customers that had money. <laughs> they could afford me. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, he, had, uh, he was Jewish, and he had uh, four children, uh, one son, three daughters, when his 18-year-old daughter walked into the room, their, their worst nightmare began to unfold. And they were so distraught that um, uh, Nan- that's Nancy, my wife, and, and I were getting married. Uh, uh, and, and we did get married, and unfortunately, I think partly because of that experience, we both threw the baby out with the bathwater. We just said... Religion, that's something that people use to be ornery to other people. And so that just went out. And um, we uh, really, our religion was pursuing the American dream. You know, get a good education, live in the best home you can, send your kids to the best school you can, uh, live as comfortable a life as possible. And that's that's what we did. And I became a ER doctor and a Uh, head of emergency department and everything. Uh, But things started to unravel for us at one point. It really started with my wife's brother drowning in front of my children. Oh, my goodness. And we had one after my wife got depressed after that and didn't get treated. And we just had one after another kind of bad things happen. Um, And one of the things was I had a patient who became obsessed with me, named his grunge rock band after me, and eventually started stalking uh, me. And um, eventually did something scary enough. uh, Anyway, long story short, the police went and checked, and his mother was in the closet where sometime in the week before he had taped her up and beaten her to death. And... um, And the last thing that kind of uh, that I recall in this very difficult journey at that time uh, was that I got home on a a beautiful um, uh, morning. I'd been at work that night, and it was in in the fall, and we were living right on the coast of Maine. And I was kind of 
drifting off on the couch. My wife got home from walking to the post office, and she said, something awful is happening in Manhattan. We've got to turn the television on. And that was 9-11. And everybody who's old enough remembers where they were at that moment in time. You know, it was a big turning point for society in general. Uh, And we watched as that horror unfolded, and then... Very shortly after uh, the second building came down, uh, we got a call from my next-door neighbor. She had a son exactly the same age as my son. They'd grown up together in each other's homes and everything. And uh, she said, I need your help getting Jamie from school. His father was in the first plane. And... uh, And... Then a little while later, we had another friend call whose brother and husband were in the Pentagon at the same time. Uh, Her husband was not killed. Her brother was. But her husband couldn't come home. Uh, They took him from the Pentagon to uh, Connecticut and put him on a sub to command it. And so she, with a two- or three-day-old baby... Uh, was there and anyways long story short I woke up to the fact that there was evil on the planet Mm. Uh, the evil is a spiritual concept and it did not fit into any paradigm I had to think about things I believed if you couldn't reproduce it if you couldn't measure it it didn't exist and I didn't want to talk about it well how do you measure evil how do you reproduce it? Hopefully nobody's trying to do that. And yet if you have seen evil, it's as real as this table right here. And uh, you know it. And um, and so I thought, well, if evil is real, what is it that's good in the world? What combats that? And I'd seen good. You know, I'd seen it in the emergency department. I remember coding people. John Doe's brought off the street. You know, we drop down. Sometimes we don't have our IDs with us or anything like that. But we live in a kind of society that we scoop people up, you bring them into the hospital, and we try to save their lives. And we throw every resource that we have at it, and we don't ask who it is. And there's something noble about that. There's something beautiful about that. And so I knew that there was also good in the world. And I went searching. I read through... uh, a lot of the world's sacred texts. I read the Ramayana, the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran. And, and then one day, I, uh, on a Sunday, very slow morning in the emergency department. It's always slow on Sundays in the, in the, in the ER in the morning. And uh, I went looking for something to read, and I picked up a Bible. Um, now, the Bible is a big book. And here is something called Provenient Grace. Where do you start reading in a Bible? If you've never, and I, I, I didn't own a Bible. I'd never read one. We didn't have one at home. We had a library. My wife's an English professor um, at the time. Uh, my parents named me Matthew. And so that's where I started reading. If they had named me numbers, you and I wouldn't be here. So <laughs> I'm glad that you, that you were named Matthew. How old were you at the time, Dr. Sleep? I think I was about 47. I'm not great with dates or numbers, but I think okay. I was about 47. Pretty late in life uh, to, to meet the Lord, but... Uh, I love it. Today is always a good day if you haven't met him. <laughs> Absolutely. So you started reading the Word, started in Matthew, and just talk about that experience. What, what happened? I started in Matthew, and for a number of reasons, uh, some which I think have only to do with the Holy Spirit, it... It impressed me as as real. I had just read those other books, and they have lots of beautiful stories and truths in them, but this has the Lord in it. Uh, The Bible has the Lord in it. And uh, met him there in Matthew, and I had been a carpenter. And when Jesus, in Matthew 7, starts talking about sawdust and two-by-fours in people's eyes, I recognized the carpenter telling a carpenter joke. Yes, and uh, that it just from the very first it just resonated with me, uh, and I would like to tell you that everything was simple after that. It wasn't. It was. It got more and more difficult actually, because for my family they thought I'd gone off the rails. 
<laughs> I can imagine. And uh, but uh, let me let me just fast forward to today. Uh, my my wife is uh, an ardent believer in Christ. I don't think she's ever uh, doubted for a second after she met him. Uh, my son is a physician. He went here to University of Kentucky, both for medical school and residency. But he's a physician at Tenwick Hospital in Kenya, where above the hospital it says, we, we uh, treat Jesus heals. So he's a missionary mm, uh, doc. And uh, my daughter is married to a pastor. Uh, they just got back from six months in uh, Kenya at an orphanage, and he is pastoring a church in uh, southern Kentucky. So. Well, I love that story, as I've shared on Hope It's Here before. My dad didn't accept Jesus to almost the age of 50. And so for those of you who are listening, you've been praying for somebody for quite a while. Uh, it's got to be encouraging to hear Dr. Uh, Slee's story. And God will do whatever he has to pursue us, won't he? Even a Bible in an ER waiting room. He will. And I suspect for most people like me or your dad, or uh, when they begin to look back, they realize... <laughs> They're the, we're the knuckleheads that it took so long for us to wake up. There were yeah. dozens of things that God was doing to try to break through to me. Uh, in general, though, we do not meet the Lord on the day we won the lottery. Mm. It's the day we lost our job, our spouse, our family somehow, our house. Mm. The Lord is... A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He knows what we're going through in the hard times. He's been to the valley. And, uh, and so uh, uh, how, how great it would be, though, to, to have a story of when I was eight, I realized I was uh, a bad kid and I went up to the altar. <laughs> but that's yeah. not the story I have. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's a great story and the ripple effect that it's had in your children's lives and that it will continue to. Uh, it's just going to be incredible. But, man, you're going to be blessed this week as uh, we're going to be talking with Dr. Sleeth. He's a uh, author of several books and working on another book currently right now that I can't wait for him to get finished. We're going to have him on here. We're going to be talking about 24-6, but uh, can you tell us what other books you've written? Uh, I've written uh, a book called Serve God, Save the Planet. It was my first book, and it's how should Christians think about environmental things. For me, everything is about the Bible. Uh, and, and I believe that every Christian should have a, a kind of a fundamental knowledge of, of what the Bible says on the various topics that are up today. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and let the Bible inform us uh, as to what to do. So, uh, serve God, save the planet was about that. Twenty four six is about the Sabbath, um, and I have a book that came out about five months ago called Reforesting Faith, which is about trees in the Bible. Uh, trees are the most mentioned living thing in Scripture, other than people and God. There's one on the first page, the first Psalm, and the last page of the Bible. And the Bible says uh, that we should be like a tree. So why did God pick that metaphor? And that's what that book is about. And and I am currently writing a book which I believe will be titled The Greatest Depression, which is about the suicide pandemic, really, that we're seeing in the United States. And again, what does the Scripture say about this? How should we respond to it as people of faith? Because, you know, we're not immune to the world's problems and pressures, um, but we are, we should be equipped uh, to stand uh, against these things and, and to help. So that's, that's what I'm working on currently. Well, can't wait for you to have that finished and have you as a guest here on Hope It's Here. We're out of time, but I want to encourage you to invite somebody to join us tomorrow as we're going to talk about this book, 24-6, that Dr. Sleeth wrote that I've really enjoyed, and I know you'll be blessed. It's called 24-6, A Prescription for a Healthier and a Happier Life. I'm Greg Horn. We'll see you tomorrow on Hope Is Here.